Lesson 26 is the Pythagorean Theorem and Similarity. So 26.1 is proving the Pythagorean Theorem. Before we get to that, I just want to review a couple of vocab words that have to do with right triangles. So if we have a right triangle, that's any triangle that has a right angle in it. And then by default, because one of the angles is 90 degrees, the remaining two angles would be acute angles. So a hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. It's the side that's opposite of the right angle. So if my right angle is right here, then this side would be the hypotenuse. It's the longest side and it's opposite of the right angle. Basically, if you were to draw a like line directly or a ray pointing out of the right angle, it would point to its opposite side. It would point to the hypotenuse. And then the legs. The legs are the, are the sides of a right triangle that are not the hypotenuse, so it's the other two legs, but that's just the general term we use to refer to the two sides that are not the hypotenuse, and you'll see that word leg come up a lot, so you just want to be able to identify it as, you know, a side that is not the hypotenuse here. So the Pythagorean theorem. The sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs of a right triangle is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So in kind of math equation terminology writing, it's basically a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And if you look over at the graphic on the right, we have a right triangle kind of embedded in between those three squares. One side length is a, one side length is b, and then the hypotenuse is c. So if you take the two legs, like we take one leg a, square it, add that to another leg b squared, you get c, the hypotenuse, squared. So a and b can be interchangeable because they're both legs. Um, one does not have to be like the big leg and one doesn't have to be the small leg or anything like that. The only thing that's very important here is that c must be the hypotenuse. So a and b are both legs. And then C is the hypotenuse. And the order of the legs does not matter. Okay, so proving the Pythagorean theorem, um, I'm going to use kind of more of like an algebraic proof. We're not going to do like the two column proof here. But to prove the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to take actually like four right triangles. So this picture um, over here on the right, you can see it's kind of like a big square and it's formed by kind of like matching up four right triangles that all have the same dimensions. And then inside that bigger square is that kind of like tilted smaller square. So we're gonna use this graphic for our proof. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find a way of writing the area of those blue triangles and then the yellow square. So for the area of the triangles, this is the formula for the area of any triangle. It's base times height divided by two, or you may remember it as one half. Base times height, it's the same thing because multiplying by one half is the same thing as dividing by two. So it's the same thing. So for these triangles, I'm gonna say area of the triangle, just like to kind of shorten it. Um, the base of one of these triangles, let's say I use like this kind of like darker blue one down here. The base is B, the height is A, so B times A, or I could write it as A times B, is just AB, base times height, and then divided by two. So that's the area of one triangle. And then we have four of those blue triangles. So if I want to find the area of four triangles, I would have to take the area of one of them and multiply it by four. So I'm going to multiply four by the area I got from one blue triangle. So it's going to be four times AB over two. And then we can kind of like cross cancel here if we want to. So like the four and the two both have a common factor of two. So I can divide both by two and two divided by two would become one. And then four divided by two would become two. So I would be left with two times AB. So the area of all four of those blue triangles combined would be two AB, which if you think back to like the, let's see, if this is the area of one triangle, that's kind of like one half AB. And then if I were to add up 
four halves, that would be two. Because two halves is one, so double that to get two. Okay, so this is the area of the four triangles. And then we're going to move down and write the area of that yellow square that's embedded in that inside the bigger overall square. So the area of a square is just side length squared. So for this one, I'm going to say area of the square. Um, that's, oh, wait, why do I write a triangle? Okay, sorry. The area of the square is equal to side length squared or side length times side length, which the side lengths of that yellow square inside, those are both C's. So it would be C squared. So now if we combine the areas of the blue triangles and the yellow square, I would be able to get the area of this entire like kind of outer square. So that's what we're going to do. So the area of the big square is equal to, let me move this over a little bit. So the area of the big square is equal to the area of all the triangles, which the area of all four triangles was 2AB. So it's equal to 2AB. And then also with the area of the yellow square inside of it, which the area of the yellow square was C squared. So plus C squared. Because if we take all the blue area, all the yellow area, that gives us the entire big squares area um, that kind of includes both the yellow square and the blue triangles. So this was the four triangles and then this was um, the yellow square. And then together it gets the like big area. Okay, so now kind of we have like our setup, our template, we can actually write an expression the that kind of represents the area of the overall square because you can see each of the side lengths of the square. So like say from here to here, we see those measurements. They're A and B. So like this kind of, let's see. I'm going to erase that purple line. I feel like it's kind of in the way. Okay, so... Like this segment right here, that's that shorter end of the triangle. And then there's this segment right here, that's the longer side of the next triangle. This is A plus B. And those two sides together, those two pieces together, make up the entire side of the bigger square. And then this side also, it's the same thing. This is A right here. And then this part right here is B so that means that this side length is A plus B. We just have to combine those two little pieces together. So now if we're trying to write the area of that bigger square, instead of writing it as like area of big square, we can actually write it in terms of A and B because it's side length squared. So it would be A plus B squared. So A plus B squared. And then that's equal to 2AB plus b squared. And now, even if it's hard to see right now, we're actually going to be able to get from this equation to the like exact Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So what we have to do first is we have to go ahead and take the a plus b squared and we have to expand it. So I couldn't just say it's a squared plus b squared, like kind of dist distribute the two in. I would have to write it as a plus b times a plus b and then I'm going to bring down the other side of the equation. So equals 2AB plus C squared. And then this is, so A plus B squared I had to expand into this. And then now that it's two binomials, I have to FOIL it. So to FOIL it, it'd be A times A. So A squared. And then A times B. So AB and then b times a, so I could write it as ba, but I could also just write it as ab, so that's what I'm going to do since I have another ab, and then b times b is b squared at the end, so plus b squared, and then that's equal to 2ab 
plus c squared. And then now I have a couple like terms that I can combine. So I have these two ABs that I can combine. This is like a 1AB and another 1AB, so together it would be 2AB. So A squared plus 2AB plus B squared is equal to, just bring down the other side of the equal sign, 2AB plus C squared. And then from there, we can kind of see like there's a 2AB on each side. So if I subtract that from both sides, so minus 2AB minus 2AB, it's going to cancel out on each side. So I would bring down my A squared negative, or sorry, 2AB minus 2AB would cancel out. I would bring down my B squared equal sign. Um, 2AB minus 2AB cancels out, and then I would bring down the C squared. So A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. We just kind of started with like the general like basis point of the Pythagorean theorem, which is having a right triangle that has a leg A, A leg B, and a hypotenuse C, and prove that we can kind of find or I guess formulate an equation that relates all of those side lengths together. Okay, so big thing, a squared plus b squared equals c squared is a Pythagorean theorem. Um, there is another proof in the workbooks of this in case you wanted to see a little bit different version. It's similar to this in that it's not a two column proof, it's just kind of structured more as like a, I guess a problem rather than like a formal proof like we're used to, but it's there if you want to check it out. Okay, so 26.2 um, using the Pythagorean theorem, which is the more fun part. Um, so example one, find the missing side length. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And just remember, c must be the hypotenuse. It has to be. I'm going to just shorten it to hyp. And then a and b have to be the two legs. Does not not matter which one is which? So we just can take the values from our triangle and start to put them in the Pythagorean theorem. And then um, we'll end up only having one unknown variable. So we'll be able to solve for that unknown. Okay, so we're given this side and this side right here. That pink side is opposite the right angle. It's also the longest side. I know sometimes it can be hard to tell what the longest side is if it's close to one of the longer legs. But it's always going to be opposite the right angle, so 13 is the hypotenuse. That means the only thing that has to go somewhere specific is that 13, and it has to go in for C. It's not going to fully replace the squared part, it's just going to go in for the C. And that means that for the 5, we can put that in for A or B. Really doesn't matter. Okay, so we'll put 5 in for A, and then plus b squared we don't know that but we're going to find that and then is equal to c squared so we're going to put 13 in for c since that was the hypotenuse and then now we can simplify so we have to go ahead and square each part so 5 squared 25 plus b squared is equal to 13 squared i think is 169 let me double check yeah 169 and then our goal is to solve for b, so I want to try to get the b by itself, so I can cancel out that minus 20, or sorry, I can cancel out the 25 by subtracting 25. So 25 minus 25, that cancels out. And then I bring down the b squared, I'm going to kind of bump it over here just for more space. And then 169 minus 25 is 144. And then my goal is to get b, not b squared. So I have to cancel out that exponent. So to cancel out that exponent, the opposite of squaring something is square rooting something. So I would square root both sides. And then square root in the left side, that would cancel out the exponent. And it would leave me with just a b. And then for the square root of 144, um, usually when we're solving, we include a like plus or minus in front of it. So um, the square root of 144 could be positive or negative 12, technically. But 
B is going to be a length of a triangle, and you can't have a negative length or distance. So in this case, even though we're solving, we would just take the positive version. So it would just be B is equal to 12. So that means that our missing side length is 12. Okay, so this process is going to look really, really similar even for different problems. Um, we have to kind of square each of our values first after we put them in. That's what we did in this step right here. So kind of first step is squaring them. Then second thing, we use inverse operations to start to isolate our variable. And then we square root both sides to finish up. Okay, example two, Angela, Benjamin, and Catherine are throwing a baseball at the park. Angela is 12 feet due north of Benjamin, and Catherine is 17 feet due east of Benjamin. Um, what is the approximate distance between Angela and Catherine? So I, like, I need to see a visual for this, so I highly recommend if you feel the same, draw a picture. It's a triangle. It doesn't take that much time to draw. So um, I'm going to, because we're given, like, Angela is like a x distance away from benjamin and catherine is like kind of a distance away from benjamin i'm going to put benjamin first so i'm going to put a little point and i'm going to call it b and that's going to help me make sure that i kind of like orient my triangle the correct way so it tells us in terms of like north and east so it's like north would be like up east south west um like if you learn one of the kind of like acronyms or things to help you remember is like maybe you learn like never eat shredded wheat or like never eat soggy waffles. Those are the ones I learned um, back whenever we were first learning this. Um, but that kind of direction should be able to help you draw your picture. So we have Benjamin and then it says that Angela is 12 feet due north of Benjamin. So Angela is going to be north so I'm going to go straight up and uh, I'm going to go straight up and put a point there and call that point A for Angela. And that distance is 12 because Angela is 12 feet north of Benjamin. And then I'll probably actually have to move this. Um, but Catherine is 17 feet due east of Benjamin. So east is like to the like right of if this is like our central kind of point in the middle we would go right to go east so i'm gonna draw a line going outward to the right and then put a point there and put a c for catherine and then catherine is 17 feet east of benjamin so i'm gonna put a 17 here because that's their distance 17 feet and then now i can draw a third line just connecting kind of like the distance between angela and catherine so you can see from our picture, um, there should be a right angle where Benjamin is because like Angela was directly north and Catherine was directly east. And then the question is, what is the approximate distance between Angela and Catherine? So we need this diagonal right here. So that diagonal is, it's the side that's opposite of the right angle. It's the longest side. So it's the hypotenuse. So we have to keep that in mind once we go to use the Pythagorean theorem. And because we drew a picture and we have this perf perfect right triangle, not perfect, but right triangle, um, we want to find the missing side length of it. So we would use Pythagorean theorem. Anytime you have a right triangle and you're missing one side and you need to find a third side, Pythagorean theorem is what you use. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared and we already figured out like okay we're looking for the diagonal we're looking for the hypotenuse so we're actually going to be trying to find c because c is the hypotenuse and then we know the two legs so we'll say the distance between angela and benjamin that could be a and then let's say the distance between benjamin and catherine that can be b and you could switch that order. It doesn't matter if you switch it, you'll still get the same answer. So I'm going to put 12 in for A. That was the first distance, and then I still have to square it. And then plus, I'm going to put 17 in for B, still have to square it. And then it's equal to the hypotenuse C, which we don't know what that is. So that's just going to stay C. 
So then now I need to simplify my 12 squared and my 17 squared by actually squaring them. So 12 squared is 144 plus 17 squared is 289. And then that's equal to C squared. And then now I need to go ahead and add those two together. So 144 plus 289 is 433. And then still equal to C squared. And I don't really care what C squared is. I want to know what C is. So I'd have to square root both sides to get C completely by itself. So the square root is going to cancel out the like squared exponent. So square root both sides because whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side of the equal sign. And then if you typically use a phone calculator to get a square root, um, you have to like unlock your phone so you can turn it sideways and then the radical will pop up usually most ones so 433 and then the square root of that is about 20.8 so we'd get 20.8 is about or is approximately c so we can say angela and Catherine are about 20.8 feet apart. Okay, so big thing from this lesson, the Pythagorean theorem is a like very, very valuable tool that you can use to find missing side lengths of any right triangle.